Uh, well, my husband uh, actually built this uh, studio, this wonderful studio space for me about five years ago. And I, you know, can fill it. I have a lot of art and I do fill it pretty well, but I love sharing it with other artists. Um, I joined the Wellesley Women Artisans and we started doing these art tours about five years ago. And I was happy to host um, other artists. And this, is, this year we have, um, I think there are 11 of us all together. So it's been really great. Well, we have hosted a lot of meetings for Sustainable Wellesley in the past. Um, I've had, I, ha I host uh, art workshops here. Uh, there's a teacher who comes in the fall and in the spring and she does three day workshops. And I have parties here. <laughs> I do a lot of abstract work. I started out doing mostly uh, landscapes and love doing landscapes, especially in acrylics, but more and more I, I found that I was drawn to do abstract work. It's just, um, it's a lot of fun, it's got a lot of possibility, and I like working with different kinds of materials. Well, my paintings are usually of nature, and I love colors and forms and shapes, so I interpret nature um, in a very colorful way. So some of them I paint outside, and some of them I take photographs and work on them in the studio. Yes, I paint year-round. Um, I have a studio in Boston at 450 Harrison Ave at the Artists' Building, and so I paint there, and uh, I'm showing here today. This is my pastry collection, and um, I gave myself a 30-day challenge, so I painted a painting a day, and so I did a lot of dishware and, um, you know, kitchen utensils. So that's what this collection is. Um, I learned that you can, the fast, you know, when you have to paint every day a painting and finish it every day, um, you learn to be a lot looser. And I found that, you know, I had to make a lot of corrections on the fly without thinking about it too much. So it was a very useful experience. Challenging, but useful. I discovered along the way, as you said, but with the colors, I know it's going to be colorful. I know what the format and composition is going to be, but I don't always know what the end use of the colors will be. I play them against each other. Wellesley Society of Artists and even though I don't live in Wellesley, Laurel Landers, whose studio this is, generously um, invited me as an out-of-towner to show my work. I, in my personal artwork, I do a lot of self-portraits and portraits of female family members and um, for commissions I do portraits of other people. I started with portraits because everyone said that portraits really teach you how to draw and so I worked for several years on my drawing skills and then I never moved on. I just got hooked on portraits. I have a hard time recognizing faces and so I, I study the features very intensively and most of my portraits, I mean a likeness, yes, that's obviously important for a portrait, but it's really only the first step. I try and imbue psychological and emotional feeling so that the viewer it evokes something in the viewer. Um, so, yeah.
Um, I've been painting, it's, I was a fine arts major in college, I've been painting for a long time. Uh, past 15 years I've painted quite a bit more. I do pastels and oil paintings and I love it. So I'm always trying to paint, improve, I take classes and it's nice to be with other artists as well. Um, I was at Brandeis in the Fine Arts Program and I went to New England School of Art and Design after that. I worked for a lot of years as a graphic designer. Um, I find when I'm doing a composition that that's the easy part for me because I was so used to doing layout and looking at design. So that is like muscle memory when I do a painting and I'm figuring out what pieces I want in it, especially when I'm outside, you really have to figure out what you want to see and what you want your painting to be. Um, recently I decided my first love was flowers. I always did flowers. And then I saw some things sitting outside that appealed to me and I said I want to try something different and do looser things and I've sold a few pieces of that, which encourages you to do more, but I always want to try something new, and then I go back to what I usually do, but I do like trying some different things. I am very inspired by walks with my dog in my neighborhood, and I, I see things and I go home and think about them and create narratives about animals in our environment. And sometimes I do collage work, and I have several of those here, which I collect things and just kind of juxtapose them with the animals, and the little animal stories and such. But this one with the deer is from Montgomery, Vermont. I saw the dilapidated house, and I created a whole scenario how the house is disappearing, and the deer come in and kind of coexist in the same kind of environment. Oh, I layer the paint. Yeah, I, I build up layers in the paint, and I, I kind of scrub things in really large and broad, and then I build layers and layers, and I go back into the work even weeks later and keep changing and adding things. And I like the idea that the painting has a history. You can see the history of the layers built through it. I think there's a duality going on here. You look at them as bright color and nice looking animals, and then you hopefully see the message underneath that it's not so easy to be an animal today and with uh, people and what people do to the land and what we leave behind and they have to deal with. They inherit everything that we, we leave behind, uh, the, the noise, the traffic, taking away of the land. Um, they have to live with that. There's the pieces here with the caution signs that people put pesticides on the yard and they have to live with it. Everything is personal, everything I see intimately, and I only paint what I know. Well, I've always been an artist, and I taught art, and um, used it in my career of decorative painting and mural art. Um, and now I have more time to spend just to study and work on my own my own art. Well, sometimes I call them studies, so that if it doesn't come out right, I'm not so disappointed. But I will also work on the same subject several times till I get it right. Um, but I've worked from being tighter to much looser, letting the water and the watercolor just work for me. So I'm enjoying doing that. I do some plain air. Um, for example, this one uh, was plain air and um, that one. But many times I'll take a photograph and I'll play with it, cut, cut it, color it a little bit, and then um, use that to start from. I usually work quickly, so it might take me two to three hours. Um, watercolor, you have, you know, you can let it 
sit overnight and, and finish it, but I tend to finish a painting in a sitting for the most part. Well, this wasn't, this was on the street in Rockford, so it wasn't uh, a place I could have set up. But. And then the light is constantly changing in plain air painting, yeah. so it's good to get little studies, but then bring that back to the studio and play with it there. I, I have always enjoyed doing my art. I, I consider it almost a meditation. I can get lost in it for hours. And uh, it was very soul satisfying. But I'm also producing something of beauty that I can show or sell or um, enjoy myself. Okay, so I do watercolors and um, I also have mixed media and I have acrylics and um, I go from flowers from my garden to uh, my travels. So when I'm traveling, like um, here's Fenway Park or Rockport, and then I also, when I'm in Key West, I get my ideas from my travels. So I have an interior design degree and I've learned a lot about perspective. So sometimes when I'm in a building like here, this is the Nobles and Greeno cafeteria, and just the, the way the image was when I took the photo and then I went home and I, I brought that to life. And as my kids are getting older and going to college, I came back to my art and I'm now um, more involved and I'm enjoying it. Lately I've been doing a lot of house portraits because I think people like my style and I'm on Instagram at Small Cup Designs and people have found me there and then I've been doing um, quite a few house portraits. I have about eight in commission right now and they're giving them as um, holiday gifts. I create my paintings really from emotion. Um, the mixed media in acrylics and many of the mixed media like my feelings. They're bits and pieces of memory and uh, emotional feelings that come from places I've seen or dreams. So many of them are landscapes, dreamscapes. I, I'm more drawn to, to abstraction. Um, I work in acrylic and mixed media. I've been experimenting with monotype. So some of the, the pieces have monotype mm, snippets in them, and some have pieces of acrylic painting in them to create the landscape. Similar to this, where there's pieces of, of monotype and pieces of painting that are then created to create a landscape. I don't, I don't plan it. I, I think about a color or a place or an image or a piece of paper that I might be attracted to. I put it down on a canvas and I think about what goes with it and it evolves. I let, I let the feeling take me someplace versus forcing the, the paint or the papers to to be what I want them to be. I let them dictate. Some of them are very personal, very emotional, like this one. This one has to do with, uh, I just can't sleep at night, and you keep thinking about all the things you have to do, and it just keeps going around and around in your head. So that's very much like that, that's very internal, where some of them are more um, very specific memories of places. Um, well, I work mostly in landscape pastel. Um, and I've been doing the work for a good 10 to 15 years now. And I, um, I just love doing my landscapes. I think most of the thing that I love is working with water and sky and kind of all the natural elements. And I try to get light into a lot of my paintings. So a lot of my paintings are more ethereal. Um, they have a lot of atmosphere in my paintings, so I try to kind of instill a mood. Um, and the mood is, you know, one of peace and kind of a calm feeling. So most of my people, most of the people who buy my work, they'll come and they realize there's a real sense of calm when they look at my paintings, so they really enjoy buying them. <laughs> I'm a clinical social worker by trade um, with a private practice in Canton. And um, I started doing this, and this is my own therapy. This is my therapy. So I paint one day a week, and I've started showing, I'm going to say a little over 10 years ago, I started st showing my work. And I currently am in a gallery in Medfield at a show, and I've done several 
juried shows in open studios, and I've shown at the Wellesley Library. I'm somewhat self-taught. I, um, I study under a painter uh, at, the, at the Jewish Community Actually Center in Newton, and I've been studying under her for about 10 years. I've always been interested in art um, since I was a kid, uh, but just never took the classes in it. Um, and as an adult, as my kids got older, I decided to just kind of explore watercolor, which I also love. So I did that for a few years and then picked up acrylic for a year. And then a friend of mine um, invited me into a pastel plein air workshop, and I just got hooked on the pastel. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, people say, oh, you have a natural talent, but I, my belief is that everybody has some sort of creative expression. And I think you just have to access that. And, I, and perhaps this happens to be my medium because I just didn't feel like I had this kind of level of ability in either watercolor or acrylic. And suddenly pastel just kind of brought that out. So it felt like my own medium.